Tyson Fury follows a ketogenic diet. This means that he has a high fat and low carbohydrate diet. Remember, carbohydrates include both starch and sugars. Have a think about how Tyson could test his foods to make sure that he was having foods that were high in fat and protein, but low in carbohydrates like starches and sugars. The learning outcomes for today's lesson are as follows. Our challenge outcome is to be able to describe how to conduct each of the food tests. Our aspire is to predict the outcomes of the food tests. The learning model is obviously to investigate because we're looking at a required practical. Our SMSC is a moral one. We're thinking about why it's important to maintain a healthy, balanced diet. And our careers link is a sports nutritionist. I'd like you to watch the video in the link below and make some notes on what the methods are for each of the food tests and what outcomes you would expect if the foods were to test positive for these nutrients. On the sheet that you've been given to fill out, the first point that you want to think about is the independent variable. Now, the variables in this investigation are quite tricky to understand because it is a food test and it's not a simple one variable versus another. For the independent variable, the one that you're changing, I want you to think about in the food tests, what might you be changing? So I'm not thinking about the four separate food tests, they are separate tests in themselves, but within those tests, what is it that you might be changing? And for the dependent variable, the one that you're going to measure, I want you to think about what you're looking out for in each test. What is it that you're looking for to know, yes, that food has that nutrient. The second point is how you're gonna make the test fair. So what variables are you going to keep the same? What are the control variables? Now again, this is quite tricky with the food tests, but I'm gonna give you hints that usually control variables are either masses or volumes or temperatures or pH values. Do any of those match to food tests and can you control them to keep the tests fair? The next part of your sheet is an apparatus list and diagram. So you can use the information you've learned from the video and also there's a slide later on in this presentation that will help you to make an apparatus list, an equipment list that is, and also draw diagrams of the equipment that you will need. Now what I've done in the next bit is black out the bits about graphs because this is a food test experiment. You can't draw a graph from the food test experiment. So I've blacked those bits out for you. The next thing you need to do is write your methods. Now there are gonna be four different methods. One to test for fats, one to test for proteins, one to test for starch, and one for to test for sugars. There is information on the next slide to help you with this and obviously you can always go back to the video as well. Just to recap then, to test the starch you're adding iodine to the sample of the food and then you're seeing if there's a colour change. If there's starch present, the iodine will change from a brown colour to a blue-black colour. If starch is not present, the iodine will stay brown. To test for fats, one of the methods is called the emulsion test and you're adding ethanol to the sample of your food and shaking it. You then pour this mixture into a tube with some water and if fat's not present, it's going to stay clear or colourless and if fat is present, it's going to turn cloudy. To test for glucose, a type of sugar, you're going to add Benedict's solution to a sample of food. This is a blue colour. You're then going to heat the tube and observe to see if there's a colour change. If there's a colour change from blue to either yellow or brick red, or even a bit greeny, that means that glucose is present. If it's only slightly green or yellow, there's only a little bit of glucose present. If it goes really orangey and brick red, there's a lot of glucose present. When we're testing for protein, we're adding a solution called Biuret to a sample of the food. This is also a pale blue colour and you're observing the colour change. 
If protein is present, it's going to turn to a lilac -y purple. If protein isn't present, it will stay that pale blue colour. The last section is the explanation of your results. So I'd like you to use the video that we watched at the beginning to predict what nutrients would be found in each of the foods that were tested. Here's the link again for you. You could also think of new foods, foods that weren't mentioned in that video, and think about how you would test them and what you predict they've got in them. So do you predict that they contain starch? Do you predict that they contain sugar, fat or protein? And why? Bringing the lesson full circle now, we know that Tyson Fury follows a ketogenic diet. We know that that's a high fat, low carbohydrate diet. Remember that carbohydrates can be starches and sugars. I want you to now think about what foods you would suggest for Tyson Fury to eat and why. And can you now explain to him, better than you could at the beginning, how to test for each of these food groups?